Hello again. So I'm going to play a few holes this afternoon and talk about getting from 9 to a 5 handicap. Unfortunately the microphone is playing up so some of the sound is heavily compromised. Now getting from 28 to 24 is a piece of cake. It's a 5 minute lesson correcting your grip. Getting from 9 to 5 is a whole other ball game. What I want you to notice in this video is chipping and putting. Well, that will give you some sort of a clue over what is one of the most important aspects of dropping your handicap. Good morning. We've had ourselves a little shave. So today's video, getting from 9 to 5, it's going to be a hard thing to demonstrate because, well, as you've just seen, the golf course is quite severe at the moment. That opening drive was about 295 down the north wind, rock hard ground, much good it did me. The hard part with being a 9 handicap, and I'm, I'm drawing on my own experience God, that's a word I can't say for some reason. But I'm drawing on what I've done in the past. Is you've got all the shots. You can hit all the shots. You can pitch, chip, put. You can hit irons. You can hit fairway woods off the deck. You can hit a decent drive. What's not happening is that you're not bringing it all together into a package that works more often. Now if you're off 9, par 72 course, you're expected to shoot say seven, uh, 81, isn't it? So you've already broken 80. You've probably even gone really low and had a 73 or a 74 or something. Off the yellow tees, you're just not doing it up there, off the whites. And, see I'm even struggling to talk about it here to a bloody camera. You've got all the shots you need, but perhaps the problem might be how you approach a golf hole, how you approach a round of golf, and what could be possibly going on in here. I got stuck on an 8 handicap between 1998, September 1998 and about May, 19, uh, May 2006, when I got to 7. That's a long time to be stuck on an eight handicap. And that's because I had issues. I had issues around playing golf, scoring, what I did in a competition, and basically thinking that I was really good when I wasn't. Now, if you criticize somebody's golf game, people get defensive, they get offended, they get Uh, shout and swear at you. That isn't what I'm going to try and do in this video but sometimes you have to tell a truth rather than a lie. Let's carry on down a second. So what do I mean by telling the truth and upsetting people? Well I've known over the years many guys in the 8 to 11 handicap range who are perfect, perfectly capable of playing much lower. The thing is, is they never really applied themselves. Playing golf was get to the golf course 10 minutes before the tee time, <laughs> stroll down to the first tee, three swings and go. And they wondered why they weren't getting any better. Hitting 20 balls before you start and holding some four footers what you need to do. That's going to be there tomorrow in the competition. Not looking forward to that. Well let's start the tee box shall we. I was on another YouTube channel and they were talking about the merits of hitting a fairway as opposed to hitting your driver hard. 
and I left a comment on there saying, you know, 220 in the fairway beats 265 in the rough every day of the week. Knowing that that would get a reaction. And of course it did. So this guy comes on and he says, I can't remember the entire conversation, but he said, what if you only miss the fairway by a yard? And of course you don't miss a fairway by just a yard. When you hit a bad shot and you're hitting it hard, you'd miss a fairway by 10 yards, which puts you in the rough, which compromises your spin and your angle into the green. And if you miss it by 15 to 18 yards, you're behind a tree. Actually, you might be behind a tree after missing it by 10 yards. You're behind a tree. You're struggling to make par. And if you're any wider than that, then you're in the thick rough. And if you've driven it 275, you haven't got a decent line on the ball. So you're going to lose it. And if you're a little bit wider again, you're out of bounds. Go straight to right here. Line of five is essential. Now, how do you do that? Well, the first thing you've got to do is to stop trying to knock the cover off the golf ball. You've got to slow down. You've got to have rhythm. You've got to have timing. And that means doing a fair bit of seven iron feet together, half a swing back and half a swing through. And getting that timing that gets you the, uh, a square club face at the bottom and using the middle. It's backing off. You look at Rory McIlroy and it looks like he's going flat out when he carries the ball 325 yards through the air. Well, he's not. He's nowhere near flat out. Even when he hits one of those big ones that go 340 and gets over that fairway bunker that's on the corner of the dog leg, it's still not flat out, I promise you. The only one going flat out is Deshambo, and he's ruined his body. So while I play this third hole, what I'm going to do is put up some photographs of my first visit to Thailand. And this will show you why straight driving is absolutely essential. And the other part of it is knowing how far through the air your driver goes. And in fact, every club in the bag. Yeah, let's, let's carry on. You know, look at these pictures of jungle, water and sand and you'll understand why I struggled so much the first time I went to Thailand and why I had to change what I was doing. Because quite simply, the way I was playing golf and approaching golf, I couldn't make a score. You know, straightness, knowing how far you hit the ball, being restrained, being disciplined. And all that I learnt out here playing holes like this helped me back home. And now it's my turn to share it with you as best as I can possibly explain. Yeah, I'd love to be there right now. But if you're going to play wild, aggressive golf in Thailand, take lots of balls with you. You're going to need a few, aren't you? And in fact, that's how you should play back here. Even if your golf course doesn't have all of those hazards, you should play your golf as if they do. <laughs> Well, that's a putt I got to remember, isn't it? You know, sometimes when you get it wrong, you still learn something. See, most of us play working men's golf clubs because we are working men. We're not wealthy and neither are the golf clubs. So you don't tend to see these big lakes and 
lots of fairway bunkers and lots of bunkers around greens because they cost money. Maintaining them, filling them with sand costs money. So out here on a golf course like this, you don't quite have so much focus in hitting a straight ball because quite often there isn't really a penalty other than being in the rough and having your spin compromised. But out there in Thailand, I learnt that straight pays dividends. You know, if you are driving it, say, 275, he won't be pleased with that drive. But if you drive it 275 and you're only hitting four or five fairways and you're losing the odd ball and you're going out of bounds every now and then, quite frankly, I can beat you with a hybrid. So if you want your 275 to count, then perhaps 265 in the fairway by just slowing down and timing it better will get you down off a nine handicap. You know, golf is not a game of perfect striking. Getting down to a five handicap does not require absolutely perfect striking. That was a little skinny, so there was no way it was going to hold the green. Getting down to five is doing this and doing it all the time. Chipping a 30 yarder to five or six feet. And because you practice these putts, you put them in. Now you know what to practice. I think one of the most important things in driving from nine to five is managing your time. You know, we have a limited amount of time to play golf. And for me, I realized that I would have to play less and practice more. Bring that balance up a bit. Because I've got to keep on top of my long game. I've got to keep on top of my short game, like there, I mean, what do I have, 10, 20, 30 yards, 6 feet, par. You know, you've got to do this. You know, the short game is, it's so much fun, that's the great thing, it's so much fun. You can use your imagination, you can use different clubs, you can get it on the ground, you can fly it through the air, you can spin it, you can roll it out. You can use the slopes, you can fly the ball over the slopes, whatever it is. It's absolute fun, is the short game. And if you think of it as fun, you'll be good at it. So time management, split your time between playing and practice. And then you need a little bit of patience and sometimes a little bit of luck. That's my thoughts anyway. Another imperfect shot. And this is the other part of getting down to five. It's not the imperfect shot, it's what you do with it. I've got two bunkers between me and a front flag, it's downwind, there's no way of stopping it. So my decision is leave it short. Chip it on, get the bird that way. Really, you need to be making 55% of these and that's how you get the handicap down if I was to put an order I would put short game first decision making second and ball striking third and I think ball striking is really important Hitting it straight, really important. And just to show you what can happen with a stupid decision, let me show you one. I'm going with the three wood. I'm gonna blast this up past the oak tree. And I hit one of those. See, that is bad decision making. The only good thing about it was it was so bad the tree isn't in my way. So whilst it is so important 
to get the rhythm, the timing and slow down with the long clubs so you can hit it straight. Short game and decision making comes first. Cheerio.